Hello, this is Matt Leonard for The Foundry, and in this video covering the new features of Nuke 8, we're going to be specifically looking at the scanline render and some of the things relating into the updates for that. So here you can see that we have a 2D image, and this is actually a render of a 3D model generated in Maya that could have easily been generated in Modo or something like that, and then it's been textured, lit, and rendered out using Nuke. So let's just have a quick look at the 3D model, so you can just see the kind of level of detail. So if we zoom on in, you can see that we've got quite a lot of different textures, we've got lighting, we've got some quite intricate uh, things here with regards to these palm trees quite a lot of geometry not a huge amount but uh, more than just a card or two now if we come down to the scanline renderer a couple of things has changed firstly the scanline renderer is able to output deep information that's deep image data and can now be directly output from the scanline renderer and we actually have a deep tab now and what this button does here the drop zero alpha samples this basically says if any deep samples have a zero value in the alpha channel it's just going to delete those and erase those because sometimes you can end up with samples that are actually completely translucent and therefore usually you'd want to get rid of those if for some reason you want to keep them you can just go ahead and click this off and then you will uh, keep those zero alpha samples now let's actually have a look at what the deep output looks like from the scanline renderer so what we're going to do in this instance is we are going to add a extra element so if we just come in and have a look what you can see is in the surf shack we're actually missing one important element and that is the surfboard itself and i've made that down here and output that again through the scanline renderer so there's our surfboard there with a nice bounding box as you would expect so we want to put these two elements together using deep compositing and we can now do that directly as i said from the scanline renderer without the use of passes coming out of renderman or v-ray or any other third-party renderer we can do it directly now within nuke so let's first have a look at the actual data that we're getting out of the scanline render so down here i have a uh, backdrop node that just covers the deep points and samples the deep points basically enable you to take the deep data and turn it into a point cloud and then the deep sample shows you the samples per pixel of that deep information so let's begin there so we're going to be looking at the surf shack itself so let's put the viewer on the deep samples and what you'll see is that down here at the bottom once it loads up we're going to have a little uh, control and this control enables us to move around and actually sample the pixels so i'm going to drag this down so we have a little bit more room we'll finish letting this render and then we're going to move this and you can see as i do we're picking up more and more samples and especially once we get into the tree itself where there's obviously quite a lot of different things going on you can see that we have about 42 samples there so a huge number of samples just around this area so if we continue searching around the chances are we may find even more so if we keep moving our position we can see whether our samples goes up but the fact that we're seeing all this information goes to show that we're actually getting all this deep information directly out of the scanline render so again i'm just going to have a little more of a hunt around and see if we can see any more samples more than about 47. Well, somewhere there i can see that there was about 60. though so we're dealing with just single pixels so it's always difficult to try and find the exact number but there's 56 right there so you can see around this area we have many many deep samples now in the deep sample actual node what we can see is information on the deep front and back position we also can see the color of the deep sample in red green and blue so this is the actual color of that information as the samples move back in depth and then we also have the alpha value so you can see that we have a pretty solid alpha right at the very front and then it begins to become more translucent depending on whether it's going through leaves or going through wood or what have you 
So that is using the deep samples. We can also directly view the deep information itself as a point cloud. And this I always find fascinating. You can't necessarily work with it in so much as it's not actually a 3D model, but what it does give you the ability to do is very clearly see what's going on in 3D space. And also because it's a point cloud within Nuke, all the things that we can normally do with the point cloud apply. So we can select vertexes and then we can snap things directly to them to make life really easy if we want to include another 3D model directly into the existing one we have and therefore into the correct depth and space. So it always takes a little bit of time just to kind of work out the uh, deep pixels. And you can see here, this model is quite large, so it's just taking a few seconds just to run through. And this is actually running slower than normal because I'm screen grabbing at the same time. My processor is kind of fighting to try and do two things at once. Okay, so there we go. And you can see that we have now a default 3D view. Now it's worth noting at this point, just in case you haven't realized, the default 3D viewer camera positions itself now at a completely different place. It's basically in X, Y, and Z at 3.5, and it's rotated so that the camera is orientated towards the center of world space or the viewer origin. So that's one new feature where the camera is just in this slightly different position. If we were to now come ahead and look through our camera, you can see a direct representation of what we had before. And if you haven't used deep compositing before, the deep to points enables you to do things like change the point detail. So we could, for instance, push this up to one, and that's going to give us more detail. And we could also adjust the point size if we wanted to. So you can see there is the deep data. And if I was to begin to move around, you can see that we've got a complete 3D model. So again, if I just press F to home in, this way we'll probably be able to move around a little bit easier. So there is our deep data shown as a point cloud. And obviously we've got some holes in areas that you would expect, but all the information is here. Now, a moment ago we talked about a surfboard, and I have that up here, if you remember, we've got that here. And if we just come in and we press the tab button to go back to 2D, Here's our surfboard, and again, that's being output with deep data because it's coming natively out of the scanline renderer. So if we come down to the very bottom here, you can see we have a deep merge, and this is set to combine, and what that means is it basically takes the two pieces of deep data and brings them together. You can also set it to make a holdout map, but we're not going to get into deep compositing in a lot of detail right now. Let's just view that. And you can now see the surfboard is composited using the deep image data directly into the scene. And where this surfboard was just stuck out in the middle with no holdout mats, you can see it now perfectly fits behind this fence and even behind this palm tree with all its leaves. So this is the power of deep compositing. No need to have holdout mats anymore. Now we can also use all the normal nodes you would expect for deep compositing because once we get the information out the scanline renderer, we're free to use it in any way we like. So just an example, I've used the deep color correction node just to change the color of the surfboard from blue to green. You can also do things like use the deep transform node and this enables you to actually move one piece of deep data to somewhere else in the scene. So I've taken my surfboard and I've moved it over here onto my porch. So if I just open that, you can see that's now immediately moved my surfboard over here. And again, it's perfectly composited behind the fence, behind the front of the porch, and it sits really nicely. All the anti-aliasing is perfect as you would expect from using deep data. Now the other thing we can do is we can also use things like deep crop. And for this instance, what I wanted to do was I just wanted to crop out this sign. Now normally if you use a regular 2D crop, what we're obviously going to see is a crop here, but all the information in front and behind will still be visible because obviously it's a flat 2D image. But with our deep crop, not only can we crop in 2D space, but we can also crop in 3D. So if I view that, you can see that we've now successfully cropped out the near and far position in the deep data, plus also the B-Box regular 2D information in X and Y. So our deep crop has enabled us to crop both in X, Y, and Z, which obviously, again, makes a massive difference and is only possible if you have deep data.
So that's the new Scanline Renderer Deep Data Output and it's going to open up a whole host of possibilities for people because we now have the ability to do deep compositing without the need to have RenderMan on our system or V-Ray or something like that. Now moving on from Deep Data, we also have a couple of other things that are worth talking about. Firstly, we have a new Apply Materials node. And this is really interesting because they've added this new feature. If I just load it, it's this filter section. And what this does is it enables you to apply the material based on a filter search. So you don't have to apply your material to everything in the downward stream. You can just say, I want to apply it to certain things. So let's have a look at the bottom of our tree here first off. So what I've done is I've loaded in the Surfshack and I've just applied a straightforward checkerboard to the entire thing. So you can see if we just zoom with our viewer so we can see everything. Here is our checkerboard just assigned to everything in the scene. Now, if we come down, you can see first off, we have this Hermosa Beach sign. And that's obviously the sign we have here. And what we want to do is we actually want to apply this sign directly to this. And we don't want to have to strip everything out like I've done in previous videos. What we want to do is just assign it directly onto this piece of geometry. So if we have a look at my apply material, I've said that the filter type is name. So it's either applied to everything or name. We can then use a number of equals, contains, not equals, or doesn't contain rules. And in this section, you can then apply either a path like I've done, or you can just apply single terms where you could say, I want to apply this to anything that contains the name, say, roof or fence or anything like that, whatever it is that you're looking to apply the material to. You can also go in and directly kind of hard link it, which is what I've done here, where I've actually come in and I've looked at the Alembic file. So if we just open this up and in switching this on, what we're going to do is actually see the result. And without this switched on, we don't able, we're not able to actually choose anything. So you're going to see this sign now being applied based on this rule that we've set here. There it is. Everything else doesn't have the texture on, which is great. If I now come to choose, you'll see that menu pop up and you can see that we now have this list. Let me just move this over here so you can see it a little bit clearer. So this is inside of the Alembic file and you can see what I've done is I've come down to my Hermosa Beach sign. I've just opened it up and I've chosen the sign Hermosa Beach here. Now equally, I could decide to choose something else. For instance, I could apply this texture to the palm tree. So I could just come in and choose palm tree, click OK. And it's now going to take the texture off of the sign and apply it to the palm tree behind. So there, as the scan line goes up, you can see that that texture has been applied. It doesn't quite work as well as it does on the sign. So let's go ahead and put it back again. So I'll choose choose the Hermosa Beach sign again and just click OK and it just drops it back in. Now we can also say that we want to texture everything else with say a single texture and that's what I've done a bit further up. So here I've taken the new wireframe shader, it's set to opaque and that basically means that we're going to get a white wireframe because my line color is white here and it's going to just apply over a black solid background. So if I enable this node to apply the material now to everything else. Once the scan line runs through, you'll be able to see that wireframe shader now applied to the rest of the model. So this apply material node now gives us a very powerful way to add materials to custom areas of our geometry based on name or various rules that we may set. Now one final thing while we're talking about the renderer and viewing the render information, we also have this new section down here. You'll notice there's a new button, which is capture this view. And this enables you to basically capture anything that is in your viewer. And it doesn't just apply to what's in the 2D viewer. You can actually capture information in the 3D side of things as well. And that can obviously be incredibly useful. So if I come down to say here, the scanline render, you'll notice that this camera has some animation on it. If I just show you the curve, it's a very straightforward piece of animation, nothing too exciting going on. And we just have a straight kind of camera move. In fact, I could come in if I wanted to and just right click, come to interpolate and just come down to maybe horizontal just to add a little bit of ease in and ease out. 
also going to do the same for the translate so let's f in the viewer frame in the viewer again grab these right click horizontal or i could of course use the hotkey h from here we drop back to the node graph once everything is finished updating and if i press obviously v on the keyboard to jump into the perspective mode in 3d space i can now look through the camera which is my camera 3 lock the camera to the viewer just so that's done and now i could if i wanted to just say what does this look like in wireframe so at the point here in the scene i'm going to just open it and say display as wireframe again we'll just give that a moment to update back down to our scanline render though it's not specifically necessary to do that and then i'm going to come into my capture this view click on it and i've only animated over 30 frames so i'm literally just going to say i want 30 frames here the flip book that we're actually going to be viewing this in is frame cycler if i've done this before i can basically delete existing temporary files so i don't end up with a huge kind of cache of existing files and i can also customize the right path so i can actually put it where i want it if i need to but i'm just going to leave it in its default position and i'm going to say okay and what you're going to see is it's basically going to play the animation in the viewer everything that's actually in this viewer including uh, not just kind of the frustrum of the camera but everything outside of that is going to be captured then we're going to open up frame cycle and we'll be able to see it so i'm going to hit ok you can see round it goes as it goes through capturing each frame and again this is usually much quicker than this it's only that i'm doing the screen capture at the same time that it's running slower than we might like so just a few more seconds to go we're now going to see frame cycler open and if we then in frame cycler just tap the space bar you can immediately now see that playing so this is incredibly useful because in the past any way that you needed to do this any time you needed to do this you would have to come in and actually render the scene in some way i'm um, trying to do it as quickly as possible you, but you'd still have to go through the scanline renderer to get this kind of output now we can do it just using the capture view control which is going to save a huge amount of time for anyone doing 3d work inside of nuke so I hope you've enjoyed these new features. We've obviously looked at the deep compositing output from the scanline render. We've also looked at the ability to now apply materials. And then finally, we've looked at this new button to capture this view. So lots of new things relating into rendering and relating into the viewer as a whole. So this has been Matt Leonard for The Foundry.